In every discovery, there is trial and there is error. There is experimentation and there is failure. And sometimes we're just plain wrong. Even the best discoveries come from an idea that's really spaced out. Hey guys, I got a riddle. What's extremely hot, invasive to our planet, and plummets downward to an explosive end? I will not name names. Hey, I'm, I'm talking space. Shooting stars, meteoroids, meteors, meteorites. What's the difference in oid, ores, and ites? And hey, are these burning rocks or are these flaming stars? What's the difference? Tell me. Please, just tell me. I got this. Meteoroids are particles, rocks and such that fly through space. Then, once they hit our atmosphere, they become meteors. And once they hit Earth, they become meteorites. Also acceptable, shooting stars. They've always been a part of our mythology. In ancient times, portents of evil. As late as the 17th century, they were thought to be gifts from angels. Hey, thanks for the rock. In 1807, Thomas Jefferson derided Yale College professor Benjamin Silliman for suggesting that rocks fell from the sky. I would more easily believe that Yankee professor would lie than stones would fall from the sky. Jefferson might have been president, but he was a bit stubborn. Silliman was right on this one. A very common misconception in our space knowledge regards those balls of fire we see in the night sky. Meteorites, shooting stars, call them what you want. I like to call them cuddly rock babies. Meteoroids glow and appear red hot as they enter the Earth's atmosphere. Where they become meteors. But get this, the meteor wasn't always a flaming burning fireball. It actually catches fire in two steps after it enters our atmosphere. First, the collision of the object with the air at such high velocity violently thrusts the air molecules into each other. This causes the air to heat rapidly. That superheated air heats the outer layer of the meteor. Whoa! There's a meteoroid, all right. It's close. Another misconception about meteorites, how hot they are when they land. Imagine finding the remains of a falling star on the ground smoldering, burning, a fiery star that scalded the sky as it landed near you. How hot is that meteor when you try to pick it up? Do you want to burn your hand off, young man? Then don't pick it up. You heard what your mother said, it's hot. When the meteor hits the ground, nothing is left but its frigid remains. Freshly impacted meteors have been found so cold that they were covered in frost. Isn't that wild? So how can something so hot in the air be so cold on the ground? It's because meteoroids are exposed to very low temperatures for so long when they're out in space. The meteor's core temperature is much, much colder than the coldest temperatures on this planet. That's right. A meteoroid spends most of its time out in the colder reaches of space. For the ones that hit the surface of the Earth, the burning in the atmosphere does little more than remove a layer of the meteorite skin. We cleared up some crazy misconceptions about shooting stars. Thomas Jefferson don't know jack about cuddly rock babies, because that's what we call Spaced Out!